She's an independent thinker with strong opinions about architecture. We live in houses. We aspire to build houses. Our shelters talk about our culture, the way we live. I show you an igloo. Immediately you know it's an Eskimo that lives in it. Interweaving everyday life with her passion. Architecture is about climate, it's about a people's aspiration, it's about empire, it's about national identity, it's about daily life. It encompasses everything. This week on African Voices, meet Nigerian architect Olajimuke Adenowa. Olajimoke Adenowa was born in 1968 in Ibadan, Nigeria. My father is a professor of history and my mother is a professor of criminology. So at age three, I had already done a European tour and my parents took me to Paris, to Amsterdam, to Hamburg, all over Europe actually. And I was exposed to buildings at such a grand buildings at such a young age. I went to the Chateau Versailles, which is the summer palace of Louis XIV, and I was awed by the building, the grounds. My dad didn't subscribe to that she's a female, she can't make good, she's a spare tire kind of thing. I was his favorite, I still am his favorite, favorite daughter. I, he spoke to me as a three year old, we had discussions. I could tell him what I thought about the building, about the person, about the future. I knew my opinion mattered. In our, household, in our household growing up, definitely. And I found out that every daughter whose father pays attention to her is more assertive, more confident, is more qualified for leadership. Fathers play a critical role in making their daughters confident. As she went through school, Adenawa thought she would be a doctor, but then discovered her passion was in architecture. I went to Staff school, primary school first. From there, I went to Federal Government Girls College Oyo, which is one of Nigeria's unity schools. And then from them to the Obafemi Aulo University, which was University of Ife at that time, to study architecture. I was admitted at the age of 14. University of Ife was the only school allowed to take people under 16, so I had to go there. And graduated my first degree at 19. Finishing school at an early age, Adenoir went on to join an architectural firm that opened up great opportunities for her. I designed my first building while working with a firm of architects then. I had started mine and I was about 23 when I designed it. And it was amazing that my boss would give me such an opportunity. <laughs> but I worked so hard. I always had a solution. I was always eager. I was always ready. I would be in the office at 11 p.m. on a Sunday when other girls are dancing or something. So my, I think my boss saw the passion and he gave me a chance. And it was so good to me. He said, at that time, he was the president of the International Union of Architects. And he said to me, you're the best designer I've ever met. And saying that from his position was such validation for such a young girl. Nobody outside the firm knew that it was a young 23 year old designing it. So I'm just blessed that I have a boss who actually says it everywhere till today. We still met at a conference last year and he was still saying that the person who designed the Federal Ministry of Finance is Ola Jumoke. If we had more mentors like that in Africa, I believe the younger generation will blossom faster. At the age of 25, Adenua went on to start her own company, AD Consulting. I established it in 1994 in a tiny office somewhere in Onikon. The office was a little bigger than three chairs or something. It was myself and a young boy who sat in the corridor. But I started anyway because I believe that you do what you can with what you have where you are at. I needed more expression. I needed to do what was in me. I felt there was much more that was in me than I, was, I could do in the firm I was working in then. The new company helped her develop her own style of designing buildings. We're deliberately guiding what you can see, like the lens of a camera. That's the way I design. I control your view. I manipulate it in a nice way so that you see what 
I want you to see, you know, and you don't see what I don't want you to see. You have a soaring volume like that, it leads your eye up. That's the whole idea. You paint it in white, there's a skylight, you are forced to look up to see. So you forget the fact that the building is not so big because interesting things are happening. I don't like you showing everything at once. I think there should be a surprise. There should be an anticipation, an experience in what you do. You should come out saying, I didn't expect that. You shouldn't be underwhelmed when you enter a building. You should be pleasantly surprised. An architect is not just a creator or a conceptualizer of buildings. We don't just conceive the baby, we help to birth it. So we stay there doing construction. Most architects, we supervise, we make sure that everything is turning out as it was planned to be, or better than it was planned to be. This is a way to bring in light because they're terrace houses, so you need to bring in light through a void. So that no matter how complex the design is, we still make sure that you can ventilate it without air conditioning or and you can light it. This is because we have to be sustainable. We're trying to protect the planet. I'm passionate about architecture because architecture is all encompassing. You need to know a little about everything and everything about architecture. You must need, know some law because there's some contract in it. You must know history. You have to understand culture, sociology, anthropology. You need to know physics. You have to understand chemistry to a point. Architecture, you have to understand art and the history of art to be a really good architect. So architecture is what challenges me enough. It gives me enough of a challenge, not a pure science, not a pure art. A good architecture is about the spirit of the age. It's something we call zeitgeist. It means Architects translate what is going on in an age, in a season, in an epoch. If you look, for instance, at the pyramids of Egypt, the pharaoh Khufu commissioned it to immortalize himself. Therefore, when you look at a pyramid, it talks about one man's quest to be immortal. It talks about one civilization's quest to be remembered forever. And aren't they being remembered forever? It's 4,500 years old and we still see them. We can no longer forget those pharaohs because of the architecture. As Adenua's architectural skills grew, she began to find her niche in the business. Leading Nigerian architect Olajimuke Adenawa founded her own architectural firm AD Consulting, going on to develop many buildings around the region. In the last 20 years, I've had the privilege of designing over 70 buildings, uh, different kinds of projects from gated communities to institutional buildings, 2,500 seat auditoria, all kinds. You know, iconic offices for people like Coca-Cola International, um, interior architecture for Coca-Cola International, L'Oreal Central West Africa, L'Oreal West Africa, various, various projects, residences, estates. And it's been exciting as a creative. I'm very hands-on till now. I design myself as principal partner. Now we're off to my favorite residence. My favorite office building is my office building, my favorite renovation is the Coca-Cola Atrium. My favorite build, my favorite auditorium is Guiding Light Assembly, but this is my favorite residence. It's actually just a three bedroom house. Yes, a lot of people will cram a lot of bedrooms into their house, so this is part of why I love this project. It's only the essential things that are there, and you know that the design is good when there's no more you can take out of it without the design being spoiled. So you can see the wave. Can you see that? Which mimics the waves of the water that you can see through the window. Most people will put a wall here to separate the entrance area from the living area. But I didn't. I stepped down the floor because differences in heights, differences in level actually signal to you that you are changing space. This was her first residential building in Lagos. Adenua likes it for more than just the architectural design. 
the client allowed me to express what should be expressed. He understood the role of a designer, of an architect, and he knew that to tap into my vision, he had to cooperate with me, and the building turned out so well. And he, they love their building. And it appears everybody else does. People copy the building all the time. I am a student of architectural psychology. I understand the psychology of space, how a space is used. That's why, for instance, I like our project for Coca-Cola. The MD called us in because they had a problem that was more than, uh, more than just furnishing a place or breaking things down. And as a very intelligent man, he understood immediately. I gave him my solution. I said, this is designed as problem solving. It is to understand how people use the space, manipulate the way they perceive the space, and make them do what we want them to do in the space. Because you know what? Your environment modifies your behavior. And that is something I understand and it comes across in my, uh, in my designs. Adenua designed the Guiding Light Assembly Auditorium 20 years ago. It was another milestone in her career. My favorite mixed-use building would be Guiding Light Assembly because of the way both opposing uses just sit well together. The offices remain quiet, private. No one knows that right next to the office, separated by a thin wall, is a 2,500-seater auditorium with traffic coming in, pressure of people, high flow of traffic. Also, because functionally, I was able to solve so many problems in the building to do with health, safety, environment, ventilation, acoustics, everything, and it still works today. The centerpiece of the main auditorium is this skylight, bringing light inside the volume, but also drawing your eyes up because all inspiration comes from above and this is an ecclesiastical building after all. It's all designed for HSC, which is health, safety and environment. You can see the windows, you can see the escape staircases, you know, it's all designed in such a way that though there are 2,250 people here, you can empty it out without any trampling on anybody or any crowding. We see architecture not just as function, we see it as distinction. Architecture is not about sheltering someone, it's not about just housing somebody from the elements. Mm -mm. Architecture is about your persona. The house you live in, the office, that is your corporate headquarters. It's about how you want to be seen. So for us, for me, architecture is a marketing interface. It's for a corporate client, it's, a, it's an advert that people can live in, that your clients can actually experience. They might forget your jingle, they might forget your one minute advert, but they're never going to ex forget the experience they get when they walk into your office. It's stronger than any sales pitch, than any marketing pitch. Adenua says she adds a special element when designing her buildings. My buildings are 4D architecture. They're not three-dimensional. A three-dimensional thing is something that, well, it's not flat, it's got depth, it's got width. But for me, my buildings have a fourth dimension, and the fourth dimension is time. Each space I design changes in time. I design lighting schemes in such a way that by night, the building is a totally different entity from what it was in the morning. I design buildings in such a way that as you move through the space, you experience something new at every step. You look up, your view is different. In fact, you might be on the upper floor of one of my projects and you can hardly believe that it's the same building as it was on the ground floor. Over the years, Adenua has been recognized for her achievements in Nigeria and abroad. It has been an interesting journey. Like, in, we have had the privilege of winning probably the most international awards in Nigeria and being recognized in different publications outside Nigeria, as far as China. This is the first international award I won. Uh, 2012 Best Public Service Architecture Nigeria by the International Property Awards. Then we have Best Office Architecture Nigeria for 2013 to 2014 African Property Awards organized by the International Property Awards for Africa and Arabia. This is Best Institutional Architects 
2014, it means a lot to me because this was the first time a Nigerian woman was given an award in pure architecture. One of the things Adenua attributes to her success is the use of light in her architecture. I painted this building white because white is a reflector, a reflector of nature, a canvas on which you can paint anything you like. That is white. In the morning, this building is like a minty green that tends towards white. By the afternoon, high noon, it becomes a blinding white. By by sunset, it begins to turn like an orange. And in the night, it is blue, but it's just white. In the next five years, it would be a dream come true if I have the opportunity to design a building that will define Nigeria's identity. The way you see the Tour Eiffel and you think about Paris, the Empire State Building, you think of New York. That would be a dream come true. Adenua's designs have fulfilled many of the dreams of her clients, but now she's focusing on the dreams for women in West Africa. Nigerian architect Olajimuke Adenua has found a passion in mentoring women. She hosts a weekly radio show. Welcome to Voice of Change. Today we are talking about if Nigeria as a country is really ready for politics. This is what we do. We catch up wherever we can. I don't have the time to go to a studio. So we catch up in my living room, in my lounge upstairs, a conference room, wherever. I write my own script in this ubiquitous notebook that I sketch and do all kinds of things in. I date the notebooks. My dear listener, I leave you today with this charge. Leadership is about you expressing your gift, using your gift to make a difference. Leadership is influence. Leadership is problem solving. In 1999, Adenua started the Awesome Treasures Foundation, which helps mentor young girls and women. What do you want to be, a hero or a celebrity? A hero. Who should we emulate, a hero or a celebrity? You are too fantastic, or some princess. A hero sacrifices. That means you give of yourself. It's not convenient so that somebody else's life can be changed. And I would love to hear from all of us. Awesome Treasures Foundation is to raise transformational leaders, and we catch them young. We start from the education resource group, where we deal with universal basic education subset young children in primary school, to the awesome princesses who are teenagers, to awesome treasures, the women and the youth. But the mission remains the same, raising Nigerians, Africans, because we're also in Ghana, we're in other countries, who know they have a purpose and who are deploying that purpose and that gift to make a difference in their communities, in their societies, in their nation. We believe that the greatest need of Africa is leadership, vision, Strong people who are ready to give their all for their people to say, this is the way ahead. And Awesome Treasures is here to address that need, to raise transformational leaders. Though Adenua is involved in changing the lives of many, she makes sure to balance her time for her family. You know, it's good to understand your purpose in life and set your priorities right. Sometimes I look at the foundation and we're reaching thousands, literally thousands, 60, 70,000 people. But at the end of the day, my two, I, I'm accountable to my two and not the 70,000. They say charity begins at home. It doesn't end there, but it begins there. So I do have time for my family. I make them my priority. I see my sons, though they're in boarding school once in three weeks, they might as well just be next door. You understand what I'm saying? I, because at the end of the day, let's be frank, a woman wants everything. An African woman especially wants everything. We want our relationships intact. We want our marriages intact. We want to have children. And at the same time, because we were schooled exactly the same way the men were schooled, we want to succeed in our careers. But first, get your priorities right. Adenua draws strength from the desire to make a difference in her generation. The passion comes from my clients. I feed off their energy. I work with discerning clients, people who actually know the difference between good and bad design. 
people who are discerning enough to understand that art is what we are creating, history is what we are creating, and experience is what we are creating. These are the people who make me enthusiastic, eager. I would do anything for my clients to make sure that their buildings come out the way it should. What gives me energy are, are clients who understand that an artist is rewarded not for their labor, for their vision. And when you inspire an artist, when you're a patron of an artist, you tap into the vision of the artist. 